Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button and to share this video with your friends. And let's get straight into the word. So tonight we are going to finish up a series that we have been doing called Unveiled. The last couple of weeks, my husband, Pastor Brad Smith, has been on the subject of how God speaks to us. And in the areas that he has already covered has been on prophecy, on dreams and visions. So if you haven't had a chance to, go back and look and check out those videos because they go right along with what I'm teaching tonight and they will really help you grow. Amen. And so tonight we are on the subject of how God speaks to us in his word. This is my Bible. I have had this Bible for about 10 years now and it is my favorite Bible because as I read, I study the Word and you'll see through it, I highlight and I will also put little notes in places and usually those notes can come from a message that I'm learning on or it could be a moment of when God is revealing stuff to me and they are very special to me because I know that's a moment where God is really pouring into my life. So tonight, as we finish up this message tonight, I pray that it will help you to have a hunger for His Word and that it will bring you to a moment where you'll dig a little deeper and ask God as you read the Scriptures, what are you trying to say to me, God? And if you allow that moment where you're still enough to read the Scriptures and listen for His voice, He will reveal so much to you. And so I wanted us to go tonight into the book of John. We'll be in John chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5, and then we'll skip over to verse 27. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And then verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. Let's start off with a little prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to speak upon something that I am so passionate about, that you are using this time to use your Holy Spirit to flow through me, God, that the words that will come out will be wisdom and knowledge, that it will be every word from you. Lord, I, I pray over every person that's, that gets to hear this and gets to watch this video, Lord, that you will speak to them, that they will leave here with a hunger to want to know more about you and, and want to hear your voice. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to start off by saying I wanted to tell my story on an area where God has actually spoken in my life through his word, and that goes along with my testimony. But before we get started on that, I did want to say, tell your story. It is so vital that you share with the world your testimony, because there is someone out there who has not heard it but is going through the same exact thing that you are going through. Salvation can be obtained. The problem is, is we have to open up our mouth and we have to share our own life with people around us. And that comes from telling the good, the bad, and the ugly. We can't see salvation come if we act as though we've never had a problem and we've never went through our own sins and burdens because we are going after a lost world that is hurt and can never understand how someone like God could forgive them if they can't even forgive themselves. Yet we only give them a perfect image of who we are. 
They have to hear even the worst times in our life because they need to see what God truly can do. And so I say that with so much fervency. Share your story. Tell it. Amen. So I gave my life to Christ on September 11th, 2001. It was a scary day for America that turned out to be a beautiful day for me because that day I was able to finally say I needed him in my life. I knew I needed him, but I didn't know how to ask. And so on that day, that's whenever I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I'm so grateful for that day. But with that came, I never, I never grew up in church. So all I knew was when you become a Christian, you ask Jesus into your heart, you ask him to forgive you of your sins, and now you have a relationship with God. And you pray and you read your Bible. And you get baptized. That's all I knew when it came to that area. I didn't know how to go to church. I didn't know how to sound. I didn't know how to look. I didn't know how to walk, as they say. I didn't know any of that. All I knew was I had accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I would love to tell you that from that moment on, it was perfect and peachy and everything was just right, but it wasn't. As I went on, I saw it as, I'm saved. I'm good. Nothing else had to change in my life. I went on about my daily life listening to the same music I would normally listen to, watching the same movies and TV shows that I normally would, speaking the same way as I always did. Didn't matter because you know what? God forgave me. And through that, my husband, Pastor Brad, would talk to me and he was holding me accountable. I didn't understand what accountability was at that time as I do now and how important it really is. But that's what he was trying to do. The problem is I was very stubborn. So when he would ask me to go to church with him, I would tell him, oh, I'm kind of tired. I had worked all week and I just want to rest. But you know what? God knows my heart and he knows I love him. So he's okay with it. And that's how I would live my life. I would not change anything. And as he would ask me more, and he would even say, should you listen to that? Because I'm not sure that's very clean. I don't think that's good for you to listen to. I don't think that's good to put into your heart. Or should you really talk like that? And as he was doing that, even though he was doing that from a loving perspective, I saw it as he was criticizing me. And my stubbornness would make me argue with him over it. Well, finally, one day, he had to go to God and he said, you know what, God? You're going to have to be the one to get through to her because I sure can't. We all have that moment where we have to say, you know what, God? It is time for you to do what you do because I can't seem to do it and it only comes from you. Whatever needs to happen, it needs to be through you. And I am so grateful that he did that because that's exactly what God did. Amen. And so what he ended up doing was he backed off. I know that sounds terrible, but that's what he knew he had to do because he loves me. My husband values having me in his life. And the way he saw it was if what I'm doing isn't working, why not I'll allow God to finally be the one doing the work? So he finally said, God, it's your turn. I'm putting it in your hands. And through that, he quit asking me about my Bible reading. He quit holding me accountable. And when that happened, the stubborn side of me came out and I said, you know what? I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to show him. I'm going to brag to him. Oh, I read my Bible today. It's funny how that works. When you no longer hear it, you kind of miss it. And so 
I started reading my Bible, and that's when I started noticing little things in the Scripture as I read. And I thought, hmm, well, that seems strange. I, I don't get that. And I would go to my husband, and I would say, what does this even mean? I, I, don't, I don't get it. And as he would speak to me, we would almost do like little Bible studies together. And he would do his best to try to explain it to me on exactly what was going on in that culture for that time period. And sometimes I would get it, and sometimes I wouldn't. And at one point, he finally said, you know what, Lonnie? Why don't you ask God? You know, if you ask him, he will answer you if you allow him to. Well, I decided to take him up on that. And that's what I did. As I kept reading scripture, I kept having more questions. And through those questions, I started asking God, what does this mean? What I don't understand. What are you showing me? At first, it sounded silly to me because I never understood why we say God's speaking to us. I expected it to be this audible voice that I was going to hear because that's how our worldly mind works. But what he did was as I would read further in the scripture, in my study, I would get the answer. And what was so funny with that was as I would read it, I would stop and I would look up and I would just say out loud, is that what you were trying to show me, God? And that's when I would get this peace that I knew that's when he was pleased with me because he was trying to reveal through his word who he is. So as I continued to ask God questions and study my Bible instead of just reading it as a checklist to, to knock off for the day, I started noticing I was praying more. And through that prayer time, I could feel when he was trying to speak to me. And it was the greatest feeling. It almost becomes like an addiction. You want more. And that's because God's building up a hunger inside of you. And he wants that relationship with you. And that's when I noticed I started having conviction whenever I'd listen to certain music or I'd watch certain things. I no longer wanted to say those words that I once felt so comfortable saying. I no longer wanted to live in that life. And I wanted to be in church. <laughs> I know it's crazy to say that. Some people don't understand that. But I can tell you right now, the deeper you get into God's word, the more you'll understand and value what it means to come to church and fellowship with other believers. Because it gives you a hunger to want to be around other people. We were not created to be isolated or alone. And so God's word, he will put that in your heart, that hunger and that love that you have for one another. That even in the hardest of days, even when someone hurts you in the church, because it does happen, we are human, we still want to be in that house. Amen. And so as I started going to church, I noticed I started just changing, but for the better. And as I kept reading and studying, I could hear God's voice speaking to me. And then it turned into where things would just be illuminated in his word. So what started off as fear brought me to salvation, the fear of spending eternity in hell, and the fear of, I don't want to die, God. I want to know you. I want to spend my life in heaven, not hell. That's how my salvation came. But my calling was fulfilled through falling in love with God. And in that love that I fell for, it was through this. This that I hold in my hand. This is a love letter. It is a love letter from God that is so valuable and so special. He doesn't hold anything back. Every single page is revealed on how much he loves us and he gives us the truth in every aspect. He doesn't hold back. He doesn't hide anything. 
And I love the old joke where they say, always take a girl swimming on the first date because you'll see who they really are. Well, this is who God is. And he shares everything, the good and what can seem to be the bad, the past, your present, and the future. And then, as he shows you this, he speaks to you in here, in his word, on how following him can lead to great things, but there's also sorrows and hardships that you will face in that process. And so I wanted to tell you what makes that so loving of a letter is that he gives us free will to make that choice. He says, here I am. I've laid it all out. I want you in my life, but I'm giving you the choice to want me. That's perfect love. And that comes only from God. No man, no woman could ever bring you that perfect love. Only God. And as you grow in that love and that relationship, you'll hear his voice. So I wanted to share that moment with you because that was a time in my life when I had to have God's word speak to me to bring the changes that I needed. And that word came from my husband being obedient. He had to say, God, I give it over to you. You're the one who's going to have to do it because she's too stubborn for me to help her. <laughs> Amen. And so that is my story. And we all have our own story. And that's just a little snippet of my testimony. There is so much more to it. But that is how God speaks to me in his word. And he still does today. As we go through different seasons in our life as a Christian, he's going to speak to us differently. He shows me amazing things that I want to just shout from the rooftops to people. But he shows me those in my private time that's for me. It's a personal growth for me. So anytime I have the opportunity to share it, I do. But I also value that that is a one-on-one -on -one personal thing that I have with him. And so I, I encourage you to make sure every day you're asking God as you read the word. What are you trying to show me? What are you saying? Don't just read it as a checklist. Read it to get to know him better. And so I want to finish up with going back through the scriptures and giving you a little rundown of exactly what he's saying in this and how this can be applied for us to hear his voice through the word. Verses 1 through 3. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. There's a relationship that takes place between the shepherd and the sheep. If you look at this scripture where it says the sheepfold, during this time, as this was written, there was a place called the fold where shepherds, say 10 shepherds, would have their sheep and they'd bring them to the fold that was full of rocks as walls with one gate, one doorway for them to get in and out. And for the night, those sheep would sleep there, all these different sheep from different shepherds. And one shepherd out of the group would stay there and guard the gate. And he would literally lay his life down right there at the gate and sleep to guard the sheep. And in the morning, those shepherds would come back. And as they were walking back, they could, the shepherd that was at the gate 
could see them and could decide, is that one of the shepherds? And when they would be recognized, they would let them in the gate. And from that moment, the shepherd could use his voice and call out to just his sheep and they would know his voice and they would come. But if you weren't the shepherd, they would not move for you to come in. And so thieves and robbers would have to sneak around by going over those stone walls to get in. And so that is the part where it's saying, does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, and they are a thief and a robber. The enemy will always try to sneak in to speak to you in your life. But when you have a relationship with the shepherd who knows your voice, you know his voice, and you hear him clearly, you will know when it's the thief, the robber, or the shepherd speaking to you. You will have discernment on knowing which one it is. And last week we spoke upon when it comes to hearing God's voice, it is always backed up with scripture. So when you are reading scripture, read the whole thing because God is speaking to you. But there is a problem where the thief and the robber will take little snippets of scripture and almost Frankenstein their own mindset and their own method to confuse the sheep. And so that's why it is vital that you have a relationship with the shepherd. We can't just sit around and wait for a word that comes from a pastor or a leader. We have to do it ourselves. We have to rely upon our own faith and our own relationship we have with our Lord and Savior to be able to get that word that we need. We can't wait and travel and go chasing after any mega preacher just to get some kind of word from them. There's no difference in God speaking to them than God speaking to you. And that is because the only way we can hear God's voice is through that relationship. God wants to have that with you. This is his love letter but we have to open it up and we have to read it and we have to use discernment and we have to study the Bible. We can't just read it. I can't stress that enough. Don't just read it, study it. If it takes you a while to get through a book of the Bible, okay, let it, study it, understand it because nobody likes something that they don't understand you have to have clarity and through that you need to get into the bible you need to study it you need to stay dedicated to your church and allow the shepherd to speak to you now if you're still writing write down for number two we're going to go through verse four and five and when he brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. That's the enemy, or even our flesh, trying to speak to us. When we have that relationship, when we're steadily speaking to God daily, and taking time to slow down, getting quiet and still, and allowing God to speak into our life through dreams, through vision, through prophecy, and through his word, we will be able to know and address when the enemy is trying to speak into our life. The enemy will always fight what's valuable. And to God, you are extremely valuable. So never, ever believe that the devil will not fight you because to God we are all special we are all loved by him and so you will learn to understand his voice and he will lead you and you will follow you have to be careful because there will be 
false prophets. There will be people with ill intentions that will always try to come into your life. Things will look great and perfect like they're just going on rosy. And then all of a sudden, you'll suddenly run into somebody from your past or you'll meet someone who you just know this is not going to be good. And that's where the enemy comes in. I like to say it this way. He's throwing a wrench in the system. He's trying to mess it all up. But even in those times, if we'll stay steady and allow God to speak to us in his word, we will always know when the enemy is trying to speak to us and we can rebuke and walk away and stay on the path and follow the shepherd who is walking ahead of us. He is guiding us. Whenever I pray over my children, I ask God to guide their steps every single day to let him lead you to stop and say, should I go this way? Because there are going to be times when you're tempted. But when you're in the word of God and you know where his heart truly is, you have that heart. And you'll know through discernment and through understanding of the scriptures on whether or not that is something you need to follow or something you need to back off of. And so I want to finish up with our final one. This is number three, and it's in verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He is the only one. We follow the shepherd because we know him, we value him, we love him, and we have a relationship with him. You should be every day, at some point in your day, going through the scriptures and reading. Life is not always going to be perfect, and you can't always stick to the schedule that you make. But at some point in that day, you can still get into God's word. I don't wake up at 5 a.m. reading my scriptures and studying and, and, and doing all of that. Some people do but that's not me. I can't function that way. And so I have my own system that I appreciate and I love that helps me grow. What you have to do is you have to find your system, stick to it, and just watch God grow in you. You will bloom like you've never bloomed before. And there will be times when you will hear his voice speaking to you in so many ways and you'll be you'll just be amazed like wow god i can't believe you're doing that i can't believe i hear your voice well god hasn't just given his voice to people like jensen franklin or pastor brad or myself or any big pastor that you know he wants to speak to all of us if we allow him to and so I pray that this was able to give you encouragement to dig a little deeper in the Word, to understand a little more of my story and how I wasn't always the perfect person who knew Scripture. I still, I'm not a, I'm not a Scripture quoter. I don't do any of that. I can read the Bible and I study the Bible and I fall in love with it every day. But none of us are perfect. Do not look for perfection in us, but find perfection in Him. This Word is that perfection. This Word is His love letter. And so I want to finish up by encouraging you. Please, study the Word, get into it, and start asking God, what are you trying to speak to me? On this and if you get still enough and you listen you'll hear it